Hey boys, it's future Ryan here, uh, and I just wanted to start the video off with an actual intro because I honestly kind of didn't, uh, but what's up? It's it's time for some Overwatch again, boys, and I've been cooking up a longer video with a lot of different things from like three or four different days. Uh, so the first thing you can watch, get ready for the venture trailer that literally just came out today. You'll hear what I got to say about a lot of stuff in that. Then I have the other two major things we've had in the past week, which is the dev blog and the dev update video. Okay, and so I just want to pause it right here just really quick, just to say that the thing that I'm like, I like about this so much is Venture. Venture is super good. I, they are such a good character. So excited for pretty much everything Venture. I can't wait to play them. Uh, just, I'm just gonna pause it here because these are like the two skins I care about the most probably. They got Overwatch Doomfist, which looks pretty nice, and then Evil Reinhardt, which looks really good. I don't think I'm going to buy either of them because $25 is fucking insane, but I will say these are probably some of the best skins they've made. Another thing I saw a small little detail, the Widow looks like her eye got shot out by Ana, which is so fucking cool. Tracer skin looks fine. Brig skin. Something about the Brig skin looks off. I just don't know what. Ryan skin looks fucking great. It's so upsetting that this skin looks so good and I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> So I'm, I'm just going to say it right now, I'm still not a fan of Mercy getting the mythic. Uh, I don't really care that much, because to be honest, I I like Mercy. I'm a Mercy main somewhat. I I'm Mercy's my second most played character. I like her. She's fun. Um, but I will say it is a little bit annoying that support's now gotten two mythics in a row. And also, for some reason, it seems like supports literally always get the best mythics as well, just by the way. I don't know if you guys have noticed, and I'm not trying to be like, like a, you know, like a little grumpy kid who's like complaining that my little brother didn't get as much or got more food than me. Why, why, why? It's not like that. It's literally just, it is kind of upsetting. Like here, let's go. Okay. I'm going to go. I'd say the best by far other than Genji are the supports by far. It's not even close. I think the tanks are the worst, honestly. I think there's one good tank one. Um, for season one, we got Genji. Genji looks fucking great here. I'm not gonna lie. Genji was, they cooked with Genji. Uh, Junker Queen, I'm not a huge fan of the Junker Queen one. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's kind of bad. Kiriko, great. Again, absolutely great. Great. Sigma, one of the best. One of the best by far. And this is the tank that I would say is actually good. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Tracer? Meh. Meh, I'm not a huge fan. I'm also just not a huge fan of like knight armor that's like, you know, not evil looking because I'm a, I'm a, I don't know, I like evil looking shit, I guess. I don't know, it looks cool. Uh, this Ana skin, I, this is personally probably one of my least favorites, but I really like the voice work they did on this one at least. Uh, season seven, I believe, was this Hanzo mythic, which I would say was probably the worst style wise, but also like at least looks good as a skin default and then we got season eight which was the orisa mythic which i think this shit is actually dog shit i think this is bad i'm not gonna lie i and i'm sorry i don't like to normally say like be mean to developers or people who make skins like this because i know it's fucking hard uh, hell look at my uh, i don't have my drawing anymore but my drawings look like dog shit bro like i i wish i could draw as well as those people could and it's, honestly in the concept art and stuff i always see the concept art always looks fire. It's just in game, it doesn't look as good. And I do completely agree. I don't think the skin looks very good in game. I think the theme kind of sucks. And I think it's just kind of ugly looking. Uh, and then season nine, we obviously got the Moira mythic, which is pretty good to be fair. I would say it's one of the best ones. But do you see what I'm saying though, where it is kind of frustrating. The supports literally have like every single good mythic except for the Sigma skin. <laughs> It's like, bro, please. Uh, well, okay, so the Sigma skin and this uh, Genji skin. It, it just does kind of suck. Uh, but that being said, moving on. Don't want to complain about that too much longer. I, I, this is fucking, I know it's a mode, but it's so stupid. It's so silly that they gave Reinhardt fucking shield the Doomfist, bro. Because now Reinhardt just, it's a joke, but Reinhardt has nothing. He's, he's not his own character anymore. Just give his abilities to everyone, bro. And actually, to be fair, it looks like this. You're going to be shooting through it like a damage amp. Uh, kind of like that window. 
this is actually a change that I thought would be interesting for a really long time. I thought it would always be interesting with the lower that Reinhardt's shield gets. Uh, maybe like when it cracks, it starts to do, you start to do damage when you shoot through it, but also deal damage to the shield when you shoot through it. So breaking a shield, but you can use it essentially as like a miniature BAP window essentially for the last like 200 health. I think it would encourage a lot more team play. And since Blizzard clearly wants to make using a shield a little more impactful, do that if you want that. That might be a crazy thing to say though. I don't know. I'm not like a bounce guy. I'm just, I just think Reinhardt needs changed, honestly. Well, not even. I think Orisa needs changed, but if we're not going to change Orisa, then we need to do something like that. To the face. Oh, wait. I didn't make it big. Fuck. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, This skin, I'm a huge fan of this, actually. This is like the best Symmetra skin I've ever seen. They finally made a good Symmetra skin. Uh, this I'm not a big a fan of. I like this. This is a Battle Pass skin. Nice. Uh, it's all right. I won't. The thing is, is once a character gets a collab skin that I actually like, I don't think I will literally ever take that off. Like, I don't think I'm ever going to take off the Ed skin for Sombra <laughs> or the Spike skin for uh, McCree or, or fuck. Sorry, Cassidy. God damn it. Doomfist looked good, though. Look at that Reinhardt skin, man. It's so upsetting. It looks so good. And the Ana skin as well, actually. I also or this Arisa skin fucking fantastic. This looks great. This one looks good, but this Arisa one I love. I love this. This looks so cool. I'm not gonna pay fucking twenty dollars for it, but goddamn it, it's cool. I'll, I'll say it. Hanaoka, love this. We love this. As somebody who's been complaining about missing Hanamura, I love this because I, I just wanted the fucking aesthetic back, bro. Like I, I was so tired of all the fucking city maps. And I am interested. I, I honestly am not a fan of like half the modes in the game right now. So I, I'm begging for more modes that are fun. And this looks fun. This looks like a lot of chaos. I'm I'm a little worried that it kind of looks like Reinhardt's going to be kind of dog shit again on this map at least. Because there's a lot of dropping like high ground and Reinhardt kind of sucks when that exists. But... I'm sure he'll be playable, right, guys? Right, guys? Reinhardt's playable. He's been playable, right? You've been playing Reinhardt, right, guys? You love Reinhardt, don't you? We all love Reinhardt. No way I'm gonna miss this. I think this is kind of... Oh, okay, actually, well, they do tease something that I think is fucking so silly. I'm not gonna lie. I understand this because I'm... I'm I guess I'm... This, this is it. So that Porsche thing, I think that is the silliest collab I've ever seen. Like, it's it's on that same level as some of the Fortnite collabs that are just actually ridiculous. Um, And I under, that's probably because I'm obviously a little younger, so I'm not as into cars as some other people are. Uh, and obviously I'm going to be a lot more into the anime and stuff, stuff that I actually like. Uh, but I just had to comment on it and say that I think it's a little bit silly. I'm not going to lie. I actually love this though. This looks fucking great. I was actually totally against Mercy having the mythic until I saw this. Then I was like, okay, fine. You guys won me over. Fine, Mercy Mans. You can keep your fucking mi your mythic because those wings look fucking cool and I want them too. Um, and that is all things Overwatch that have happened in the past week. Sorry about not making a video. Uh, I'm going to obviously. It's just there was so much shit happening that I kind of wanted to wait for it to all come out and talk about it all in one big video. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. I hope everyone else is as excited as I am about season 10. Let's hope that the game keeps on a path that's good. And that's about it. Later. Whatever, it's fine. You're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> um, so we've got a director's take. Welcoming ventures to Overwatch. Hello, it's been a while since my last blog. We've been hard at work. Let's get right into it. Uh, if you want to read this whole thing by yourself, I'll have it in the description. It'll be linked, but... I'm not reading all this because a lot of it is, to be honest, I'm st stuff that like, like here, let's be honest, I don't really care about most of that. Uh, there's one interesting thing here, which she was the most pick top picked hero in quick play this past weekend, which to me confirms that pretty much any hero would probably be that, honestly. Uh, so I, I would assume that every single weekend when they do this, that's the top picked hero, which is kind of interesting, I guess. Um, I will say, yeah, Valerie, oh my god, 
I'm so sorry. I, I just have to apologize before I even attempt to pronounce the name. Valera Rodriguez. Rodriguez? Rodriguez. Valera Rodriguez. Rodriguez. I'm losing my ability to speak. Rodriguez. Why Rodriguez? Why, why, what is happening? Am I f how to say? I'm pretty sure it is Rodriguez. Rodriguez. I'm giving up. But uh, <laughs> I like their, they, they did a good job. Good job with the voice acting. I actually really like the character. I know a lot of people are going to be weird about it, but I love it. I think it's, they're super cool. Um, Watching all your reactions, we're pretty happy with the kit turned out. This is another thing. So the team was pretty happy about where Venture landed from a bounce perspective. Uh, launcher early in the competitive. We're still deciding how early, but we feel like they're in a suitable state, fun and fair to play against. While we don't foresee needing to make many changes to our kit, we're going to be listening closely to your thoughts on Venture once she's in. Uh, this, okay, so pretty much the first thing was that they were looking at tweaking a few things. The first thing was tweaking some of her burst damage. Uh, from her drill bash and clobber their melee into damage over time uh, Which honestly that's kind of what I thought the whole, they should have been the whole time to be honest because when you think of a drill you Think of something that you know like goes for a while like it goes <laughs> You're know, like digging with it, you know uh, And it was kind of weird that she was like bursty like you would dash at people do a bunch of damage They were gone and then you would just dip out. It was really fun to be fair But I felt like it was kind of weird for the drill Hopefully it still feels just as good as uh, they did before, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, no problem with that, though, to be honest, because it, like I said, it honestly kind of fits better in Hero Fantasy, and also I don't, I think that's fine, because they were trying to reduce, like, one-shots and stuff. Next, we're trying to reduce the vertical knockback of Tectonic Shock, alongside those minor changes to Venture, a number of other hero changes. So this is where it started to get interesting for me, starting with our tanks. So if you are an Overwatch fan right now, you know that Tank is in a really bad way right now. Tank is not having a good time. Uh, will I say that every tank is having a bad time? No. But will I say that most tanks are? Yeah. Me, for one, uh, I've been a Reinhardt main. I've, I've had a thousand... I almost have a thousand hours on this game. I almost have 500 hours on Overwatch 2. And I have not played almost at all this season because of how terrible Reinhardt is. He is the worst character... I think he's the worst character I've ever seen in this game, period. Like, he's, more, he's up there with... Symmetra points and certain other characters that were just genuinely useless. He is right there um, It is actually crazy. So and that's not just Reinhardt by the way all of the tanks feel bad I went from season 9. I was at least able to still play Winston every once in a while and have fun I can't even play Winston anymore. It's completely fucked. So I'm done. I don't play tank anymore uh, And I'm going to play tank next season. We're gonna it's probably gonna be just as bad. And we'll see uh, but for tank, they said the two the two things that we got teased were they're upping the impact of Junker Queen's Carnage, which is her like axe thing that she throws that makes people bleed and does a lot of damage. I would assume this is just buffing the damage probably because they didn't, I don't think, when they buffed everyone's health. And Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, which I'm going to be honest with you, this is t completely terrible. This is a terrible change. I, I, I don't want to say it's going to be the worst necessarily. Maybe it's a really good change, actually, and I'll take my words back. But honestly, changing Reinhardt's Earth Shatter, this thing is does not need... You could literally make this stun for like 10 seconds, and I don't think it would change anything. Reinhardt's problem is not himself. It is Orisa, it is Malaga, it is all of these counters and the counter watch game in general. Um, so to be honest, I am pretty disappointed with the tank changes. Being literally two changes uh, for... The entire role pretty much there is uh, before and i know this is just like saying things that are coming there's not necessarily everything but i will say if this is all we get this is terrible i'm not even gonna lie i know there is one other big guy and i'll talk about him individually but for the most of the tanks from what we've seen it looks like it's pretty bad honestly we didn't get pretty much any buffs and i would say tank players in mass are quitting right now so hopefully things change about that um and then the biggest tank changes coming to season 10, though, are for Wrecking Ball. Uh, and this is why I'm saying that it doesn't look like there's going to be big changes, because I feel like they would have said if there's going to be like a role-wide change. Um, but they're coming for Wrecking Ball. These are some great improvements to Wrecking Ball's grappling hook. I actually don't mind this, because Wrecking Ball, honestly, was pretty bad as well. He's been just as bad as Reinhardt a lot of the time. Although at least Wrecking Ball has had certain times where he was meta. 
compared to Reinhardt, who I don't think has been meta once. Um, but actually, I do like these changes quite a bit. I'm actually interested in playing Ball now, because now he's going to be able to retract himself. Uh, he has a reduced cooldown when not entering ramming speed, and can uh, I think he can retract himself and also do the opposite. I'm not sure, though. Um, oh, no, it does just look like he can retract himself. Okay, uh, well, and then there's also some changes to adaptive shields. Now, after using adaptive shields, you can reactivate the ability to transfer up to 300 over health nearby allies capped to 75 over health per ally and then they say which okay actually before i say what they say i am personally personally okay if you prefer that i'm okay with it um but i'm gonna be honest i think this is a complete wrong way to take tanks i think making every tank like junker queen shout or making everyone just give each other health instead of shields i think overwatch is way too scared of shields now I think they're terrified of shields nowadays. I think it's actually bad because I think we need different abilities. I, I personally, I would rather shoot at the shield than shoot at somebody who just has 75 more health all the time. Like if everyone starts getting like 400 health, I'm, it's going to drive me insane. I will literally just stop. Um, and that is, this is what this change is. Um, and then they also say this change should give Wrecking Ball more capacity of protecting his allies and, and initiating engagements, defining abilities of what we want to see in tanks. And I'm going to be honest, I don't like this. This concerns me quite a lot. The defining features of what we want to see in tanks being protecting his allies and initiating engagements. I get that. However, the way they're doing it is really bad. <laughs> I do not think that giving a, a Tracer 75 health is going to be very healthy for the game. I think that's going to get nerfed pretty fucking fast. I also think it's going to be hated pretty much universally by everyone and then everyone's gonna complain about wrecking ball being overpowered and then you know what's gonna happen everyone's gonna forget that tank feels like shit because all everyone's gonna be complaining about oh but wrecking ball is so fucking broken like what's been happening for the past until season nine where season nine was the first season i would say where the tanks were relatively balanced and that's when you finally saw the counter swap was so bad and i think it's just gonna remain like that um for foreseeable future I'll take back anything I said, but I'll be honest, I am very disillusioned with the tank role. I don't even think Blizzard cares. I, I'll i be honest, I don't think Blizzard plays tank really, honestly. I, I, like, you need to, I need proof otherwise, because honestly, I feel like anyone at Blizzard at this point, there should have been tank changes by now. Tank has been miserable for nine seasons. And I know some people are going to disagree and be like, oh, well, there were certain metas that were fun. Yeah, those certain metas were fun because you played the fucking overpowered character who was literally dominating everybody. Like, <laughs> Tank was never fun unless you were literally playing the most broken character. And I will stand by that as somebody who's been playing Reinhardt this entire time of Overwatch 2. No, this shit is dog shit when you're trying to play anybody that isn't just the meta tank. Um, now, I know that was a lot of negativity right there. Let's move on to some positivity, because let's be honest, this is pretty good. Uh, damage heroes, there'll be some light adjustments to Sombra and Tracer. Um, I know a lot of people specifically are mad about Sombra. I'm a big Sombra fan, honestly, so I love Sombra. I like playing her. I know she's super annoying, but I think she's super fun. Uh, but honestly, I'm totally okay with some Sombra nerfs, because she was really, really dominant, especially in the lower rank stuff, uh, at least from my experience. And the higher rank I went, Sombra just became more annoying, but less uh, like game-dominating, essentially. Tracer, on the other hand, I think is completely busted, and I don't, I think they're going to change her, and it's going to be bad, because Tracer should never be changed, in my opinion. She's like what the DPS should be at their power level. They should all be at Tracer's power level, in the same way that all the tanks should kind of feel like Reinhardt, like that type thing. Um, so, Swimmer's Virus is now taking a small hit on the damage over time, 100 to 90, uh, since the ability is now up for Virus. Uh, Tracer's been str quite strong since Season 9 changes. They're looking at some light changes for her right now to make her more punishable and require more precision. So, I would assume probably spread and then probably a cooldown nerf to either recall or blink, probably, if I had to guess. Um, which honestly, I'm not a fan of that for Tracer. I really think what you need to do with Tracer is super simple. You literally just need to make the DPS passive have like a threshold of like 15 damage. Uh, because that's the only reason Tracer is so dominant right now is you literally just get tagged from like across the map for like one damage as a tank across through like three walls and then you can't heal. You, you get 20% less or 15, what is it? I think it's 15% less healing, uh, 
which is impactful to be fair. Uh, but I will not lie, I do like the Sombra changes because Sombra was pretty dominant. And Tracer, I'm, I'm alright with, uh, like, Tracer's been pretty dominant now, so I'm alright with our Gidgers getting nerfed. But I do think it is sad that we're seeing Tracer get nerfed, as in my opinion. Like I said, she's kind of the base that everyone should be. Um, moving on to supports, we're looking at a shift in power from Mori, Moi, Moira, Lucio, and Ilari. This was the one that I've seen a lot of people complaining about, but I think far, like, I think... The only reason I've seen more people complaining about this is because nobody voice tank. Uh, <laughs> but moving on to support, yep, that means we're taking the power from one part of their kit and funneling it into another. Um, so this to me really sounds like what they're going to do is they're probably going to remove some of the boop stuff from Lucio, like nerf it a little bit, not remove it, but nerf it a little bit and focus it back in the speed, which honestly I think is fine. I, I'm a big, I, I was a huge Lucio fan. Uh, I do think it is a bit sad that Lucio is finally, like, meta for the first time in, like, two or three seasons, and then he immediately gets nerfed the season after, probably. I guess, to be fair, I don't know if it's a nerf, but I just assume it is. Uh, that means taking the- yeah, and then, so, Alari, for example, is just re receiving a slight nerf to her primary fire recovery time, 2 to 2.5 seconds, but giving back more power to her secondary heal, increasing it. I- I don't know about that, actually. I don't, I don't like that at all, actually, to be honest. I, ooh, yikes. You know, no, that's... I, uh, that... Changes like this always just feel like shit. Like, they just do. They just ruin the flow of everything. And also don't change very much, to be honest. And if they do, it's, like, at the very highest ranks. And I... Honestly, I don't even think Alari needed, a, like, changes, really. I mean, maybe some, like, with the pylon, but that's just because your ability you designed was kind of a silly one, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that, actually, to be honest. I already thought Alari was kind of lame. Like, I I never pick Alari when I queue up for support. She's just not super fun to play, I guess. Um... And then this I really don't like, which is also some light buffs for Life Weaver. I'm so tired of Life Weaver, bro. I hate him so much. I it's a hot take, I know, and he's not very good. I'm not I'm not saying he's overpowered or anything like that. I just think he's fucking like annoying. <laughs> Honestly. He's annoying to play against. He just pulls people away and shit and like raises people up constantly, throwing down trees, does a bunch of healing, literally destroys shields, like I, I do not think Life Weaver needs buffs. Also, I will say one thing. The fact that we're buffing... He, he, I, I know. Uh, a lot of the time on this channel, I'm sure if you're a support main, you feel like you're just getting attacked. But what it, to, like, to be honest, what is the point of buffing literally everybody's health if we're now just going to be buffing healing again, bro? What is the point? Why are we running? We're like running from power creep into more power creep. I don't understand. Um... So yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, the only change I really like here for the balance is Sombra. I'm alright with Wrecking Ball. I'm fine. I like I'm I'm worried, but I'm okay with him being kind of broken for a little bit because he's been pretty dog shit. Um And Tracer, I'm not a fan. Yeah, honestly, I, I'm just not a fan of this balance patch. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not I'm not a huge fan, at least from what we've seen. Uh, I will take it all back, I guess, if we see the actual changes and they're fine. But for right now, not a fan. I'll tell you what. Um, and then where are we? Blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, we're excited as you are. Heroes no longer in Battle Pass. This is good, but obviously you already knew that. And then there's a developer update, which we're going to start now. But this was the first thing I wanted to talk about. And this is the most important thing to most people, I would assume, because it's balance. Um, now, moving on to... I, okay, I'm gonna, so a lot of this is probably gonna get edited out of the video because I don't want to listen to the full, like, minute and a half, you know, because you can just go watch the video, but they're removing grouping restrictions. This is the biggest change they've made in so long. This is so nice, and I know a lot of people are, like, saying there's a lot of problems with it, which there is, but Overwatch has been this game about playing with your friends. Like, the whole thing was, like, it's a teamwork game. You're supposed to play with your team. You're, you're supposed to be having fun with your team, and working with your team and then you couldn't play with your friends and it wasn't and, and like i know you can play with your friends in quick play but as soon as you went to competitive like personally i was in plat 
my brother would be in gold and I couldn't play with him a lot of the time. And it would just be like, what, what is even happening? How is this, how has that even happened? Uh, and it's because we were just like, he was at the bottom of gold and I was at the top of platter or whatever, or I'd go up to diamond sometimes and my MMR was really high or whatever. And it sucked because it was like, dude, I just want to play with my friends. I'm like, just trying to have fun in your game, but you literally just say no. And it's been such a large problem that was just not addressed for so long. Uh, to be honest, I, I hate to say it, but I do, I do somewhat think that this could be too little, too late type stuff where Honestly, I feel like most of the friend groups who played Overwatch are gone by now. Like, obviously, there's still a lot of friend groups who play Overwatch. I'm not saying the game's dead or anything like that. But I'm saying a lot of those people who were playing with their friends already left because you guys literally didn't let them play with their friends for like... It's been like five years, it feels like, where I haven't been able to play with my brother. <laughs> like, dude, what the hell? Uh, and honestly, I would have been fine with it as long as it wasn't so harsh. It was so fucking harsh, dude. And like... It was, and I get it, like you're trying to keep it competitive. But at the end of the day, if, you, if your game's competitive, but it's not fun, no one's gonna play it. No one's gonna play it. I completely agree. Overwatch is literally only fun when you're playing with your friends, in my opinion. I think if you're playing by yourself, this game is hell, like genuinely. But if you play with your friends, this game is one of the best. See, and I think this is what they should have, I, I've been saying this, I'm not gonna lie, I've been, I'm, I hate me, okay, I don't hate it, I love it actually, to be honest with you guys, I'm a fucking, I'm a glutton for that, that, that feeling of, I was right and I told you so, <laughs> but this is literally what I've been saying for so long, is people just want an option to play with their friends, and if it's a little more silly, that's fine, they don't care, and it will also help the people who keep getting into these games, like, I, personally, I've been queuing up for a lot of games recently, and it's been constant running into a three stack or a two stack. And I understand that you can't really complain about that because it, like, it's just someone playing with their friends. But also to be fair, it is such a hardcore advantage that is just ingrained on the enemy team that I do not have. And I already am at a disadvantage. I play Reinhardt, bro. Like, please stop putting me at disadvantages, please. I would mean that if you're bronze, like, Five, let's say and then your friend is silver two you would be a wide group but if your friend is gold three and you're plat five you're still a, a narrow group okay and then masters is when you're more than three divisions apart and see and this is i understand like not everybody obviously is masters and they don't it's not super important that all their masters players are able to play with their friends but i do feel like it should have been worked on by now oh yeah here's okay I'm, i don't want to listen to this so this is actually useful um grandmaster and champions all groups are wide so that means that, and like i was saying this should also help the solo player because now the solo player shouldn't have to go up against nearly as many like groups and stuff at the high ranks especially uh or like running into a you won't yeah see wide groups of four are not allowed because then you wouldn't you would need one other person essentially queue up in your game and that always sucks so that's great honestly because now that means that solos aren't just gonna queue into a game with one group on their team essentially oh yeah and that is the other thing you, your rank won't go up and down which is another really smart thing because yeah boosting is a problem as much as i would love to be able to climb my brother uh from bronze all the way to like time and just by playing with me I, I i don't think it's fair to not be able to do that okay so i'm i'll probably skip the rest of this because to be honest you can go watch the video like i said and i'll just kind of explain it and i mean honestly it's graph does a good job of explaining it or, or if it's infograph uh but so now they're making the avoid his teammate a list of 10 and it's a like most avoided at the top and least avoided at the bottom okay um, or at least likely to be avoided. Most likely to be avoided and least likely to be avoided, like it says. Um, and this is super nice. And then also you're able to pin people, which means they'll never be replaced, which is so fucking nice. Because I'll be honest, there's some people... And I understand you might be like, bro, you're in, like, diamond, bro. Who are you avoiding? There are people you're gonna want to avoid, dog. And honestly, when I was in top 500 last season... For a long time, I've always thought Avoid his teammate was like super silly and I never understood why he was even there because it was like, bro, you never run into the same person. And then last season, I got top 500 and I understood because yeah, there's some fucking players who are just absolutely dog shit. I don't know how the fuck they even got up there, but they're just actually bad. 
and you just you, you have to avoid them or else you're just gonna lose and if not if they're not actually dog shit then they're toxic and me personally i really hate toxic people more than the dog shit people so i love that i can pin people because there's gonna be somebody who's gonna be an asshole to me and i'm gonna permanently fucking pin them at the top and they're gonna it's gonna be like a fucking bounty board where this man is like the most hated man in my entire career and i'll just always know um in all seriousness though this is pretty nice and then also i said new avoided players replace the oldest unpin avoided player which is super nice because then obviously it's just replacing the oldest because you'll forget about them um but actually really nice really smart system again i can't be mad at this this is actually good uh now i'm gonna skip forward like i said this is something i'm a little less happy about um you so i know this is a hot take oh uh, well, not even a hot take i know this is like a hot pressed issue where there's two really aggressive sides to this and i think it's very clear what the two sides are there's the people who have always had good internet um who think that this is good and there's the people who have always had or not always had good internet who know that shit like this is usually bad and i'm someone who's not always had good internet so i am really not a fan of this now there is something that I have to say. There's, I'm okay with a lot of these, honestly. I think the 10 plus games one for quick play, completely fine. If you're leaving half of your fucking quick play games, you are actually, you have to be leaving them. There's no fucking chance. Or it's your fault for queuing up for 10 fucking games in a row with your internet that killing itself. Um, six to nine games for four hours, that's also fine. Four to five games, I would, I would even be okay with this getting up, honestly. My problem is that we have one at one and one at two and three because one game left having a warning i think that's silly i think leaving one game literally like anyone can have their internet just shut down once and having a warning for it is silly i'm not gonna lie it should be two warnings should always come after your second like the second time you make a mistake first time you make a mistake you tell them not to do it again second time if they make that mistake again you like you are a little more aggressive and you're like, hey, bro, I'm warning you, don't do that again. <laughs> um, and then you go into the actual punishments, in my opinion. Um, so I'm not a fan of those two. I'm the unranked. And then it's the opposite for competitive. So I'm totally fine with 10 games left throughout the season uh, being a competitive season ban. Five games left. I think it's a little early. I would maybe put it like seven, but I'm still fine with it. Um, four games left. I'm still fine with that. These are the ones I'm worried about though. So as somebody whose internet is bad sometimes, now if I disconnect once, I get a 15 minute ban, which that fucking sucks first of all, which is fine. I'm okay with that though, because it's competitive. If I get disconnected 15 minutes, that's fine. If I have to wait again to queue up for that, I queue up again and it's 15 minutes. Uh, and then you get DC'd again, let's say. And this is my biggest problem with this system, honestly, is it's out of your last 20 games played. Uh, and that doesn't go away. So if you leave, like, let's say I got disconnected, uh, like two weeks ago, uh, my internet just completely gave out for some reason because I live in a rural place. Honestly, my internet just goes out randomly. Um, and I was got banned for 15 minutes. I'm fine with it at 15 minutes. I just get off for the night. It's fine. It is what it is. Uh, and then I keep playing. I've played like five or ten more games now. It's uh, then the next day after that day, uh, let's say my internet goes down again, or maybe the Overwatch servers go down because let's be honest, the Overwatch servers aren't the best. Now I have two games left out of the last 20, and it's a two hour ban. Now that two hour ban, still don't really care that much. Two hours isn't that long. Uh, is it a bit harsh? Maybe, yeah, uh, but I don't really care about that. The problem is now that I have two, let's say I play another five or 10 games throughout the next like three or four days, and then I get disconnected again on one of those last games, I've got an eight hour ban now. It's It stacks up and it's I really don't like that. Uh, if they just went away after like a week or so, I'd be a lot more okay with it. Um, but as somebody whose internet disconnects a lot, sometimes you just like, my internet might just disconnect and I don't know if it's going to be back later in the day. So maybe it comes back later in the day. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to play again now that it's back. At, it's been back for like an hour and then it drops again. And if it drops again, then I'm banned for two hours. And it's like, okay, then I guess I won't play again today. 
And then I, let's say, like I said, like two or three days later, I played 10 more games of competitive and then I get kicked again from a game. And then I've got eight hour ban. And it just keeps doing that. I'm just not a fan of this. I'm going to be honest. I think the people who are, I, I, I know I kind of divided it into two groups at the beginning of like, you either had bad internet and you understand what I'm saying here or you didn't. Um, and I hate to separate people, but genuinely, I feel like that is what it is. You either have the empathy for somebody who has bad internet or you just don't. And if you don't, in my opinion, I think you're kind of being a piece of shit. Um, especially for the quick play ones. I Competitive play, I'm a little more willing to let all of this happen because it is competitive. And I kind of can understand the argument of like, hey, it's a competitive game. If your internet goes down, you shouldn't play. I still think it's kind of dumb and it's kind of an entitled opinion to be like, you know that game that you love and you play and you 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 just want to be good at and you play it so often, you like the competitive, you're grinding to be better. You shouldn't be playing it because your fucking internet is bad. And just because you were born in a place with bad internet, you shouldn't play it. That fucking sucks. That's entitled as fuck to say. And I don't think that's fair. Um, and I really think the unranked ones are the problem, honestly. Like I said, I do have problems with the competitive ones, but the unranked, this is the one game I'm not a fan, two game I'm not a fan, and this I'm not a fan. These two I'm alright with, though. All things said, to be fair though, at the end of the day, this isn't major for me because honestly, nowadays I do have pretty decent internet, but I will always, always, always stick up for that person with shit internet because I do understand how fucking frustrating it is to not only be at a severe disadvantage to everyone else because your internet is worse, but to also have the entire community telling you you shouldn't be playing because your internet is bad and you live in a place that doesn't have good internet like everyone else does, apparently. Fucking terrible mindset. I hate it. But also, I, I, I do want to know. Um, like, oh wait, 10 games left throughout the season. I was about to say, what does this mean? Because like, if you leave five games and it says you get a competitive season ban, right? So I was like, how do you leave five games and then you still can leave 10 games somehow? But now I understand. So if you leave five games in your last 20, you get a permanent co or a, a competitive season ban. So if you get disconnected five times out of your last 20, to be fair, five out of your last 20 is kind of, kind of insane. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Okay. Uh, well... I don't have as nearly big of a problem with that anymore, actually, the 5 out of 20, but now I have a huge problem with this. 10 games left throughout the season is a competitive season ban? Are you serious? Wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. I would assume this isn't out of your last 20 games, right? No, this is actually, I actually, okay, I'm not gonna lie, I actually completely disagree with this now. I'm not gonna lie. I know that some of you might be saying if you're disconnecting 10 games in a competitive season, you shouldn't be playing. But also, in my opinion, that's not your fucking fault, bro. A lot of it. And I get that you're trying to punish leavers, but this is way too harsh now, actually. I absolutely get disconnected 10 times in a season. Are you kidding me? No, this is actually bad. I think, dude, there's a, I, there's a chance that some fucking pros are going to get this. I'm not even going to lie. I think this is, whoa, okay, uh, I'm going to need to see more about this, and maybe you guys in the comments are going to completely disagree and say I'm completely wrong, um, but I'll be honest, this is dog shit, actually. I'm not going to lie, this is horrible. 10 games left throughout the season? Aren't seasons like two months? Holy shit, wait, wow. That's actually bad. I'm glad they didn't put that in quick play, or else I would have actually been made a whole video on this, actually. Um, but I still don't like that, actually. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of dog shit. I might get comp banned. Just from my internet. Wow, that's crazy. Alright, well, I'm gonna skip past the rest of that, though. That's, that's kind of fucking absurd. Uh... And, I, you know, I, I will say it. I know that a lot of time I, I've been saying recently, especially that I, I'm trying to be a lot less, uh, you know, I don't want to say toxic because I don't think what I was doing before was toxic. But I'm trying to be a lot less like attacking of people in the community because I just don't, I don't like doing that. Uh, but I will say, however, if people are going to come to me and say that I'm defending people who are leaving and I'm only saying that because I like to leave comp games, uh, you need to grow the fuck up and see that there's people who don't live in the fucking same situation you do, bro. There's a lot of people who live in s countries that don't even have good internet still, like anywhere, really. They, they don't have it pretty much anywhere. 
I'm lucky to have finally gotten, like, I'm in America, hell, I'm in the middle of America, and I just now got fiber. Literally, I still don't even have it, actually, but we're just now getting it set up. Literally, like, today. It is fucking ridiculous <laughs> that people are so, like, against, especially, ah, God, I, okay, I'm gonna stop, because I'll, I'll just keep ranting. Because imagine how many people started this game with actually dog shit internet. Like I had like 300 ping when I started playing this game on my PlayStation. No one else in my family even understood what internet like really was other than my dad. And he, and to be honest, they just didn't care. So I had dog shit ping anyway. Um, I would have never kept playing. If I got comp banned like that, I would have quit. I would have never played. And that's tragic because this is like my favorite game of all time. Uh, okay. Also, this is like a streamer mode. Uh, I'll just keep, put it on here because this is nice actually. I am actually excited for this because I've always felt like I should be hiding the names on my fucking YouTube videos and stuff from people in my videos because I just feel bad. I don't want people to get like added or people to be toxic towards people ever. So, but this, I'm not going to comment on it that much because to be honest, it's just not that important to me, but it is nice. I, I will say it's nice that streamers are finally getting a, a, a streamer mode. Oh yeah, so, okay, so they made it so if you're endorsement level zero, the chat is restricted. You can't voice chat or text chat, I think, uh, which is totally fine, honestly, because zero, to get endorsement level zero, you have to be, like, punished for being a toxic asshole pretty much already once. So in my opinion, that's completely fine. Um, I The people who are toxic, I, I think that's totally fine to have them banished to this little zone where they can't talk, because honestly, that it's, like, one of the most annoying parts of this game is... The community being absolute dog shit. Remove chat for spectators. Season 11. This, I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was kind of silly. Like, I don't. That's not that big. Like, I don't think there's many people being that toxic in the spectator chat, to be honest, but I guess, sure. And I, like, I'm not gonna complain about it. I don't care about talking in fucking spectator chat, bro. And then, yeah, for season 12 and beyond, they had, like, faster reporting, I think. Which, that is nice, because it takes a while to report people currently. It's kind of upsetting. This is something I'm really not sure about. They have said they're coming out with these player surveys. Um, and I was thinking, like, you know, Fortnite player survey type things, where you queue up for a game, and sometimes you'll just leave that game. And then, oh, it'll be like, how do you feel about building on a scale of 1 to 5? And you'll just rate it like that. From what I understand, it seems like the player surveys uh, are going to be a QR code that you have to scan. Which, that is not going to work. I'm not going to lie. You're not going to see very much data from that. Because me personally, I will never scan that QR, QR code ever. Because I just don't care. Like, well, okay, maybe I will. But that's because I care so much. That's because I'm the only person who does care this much. An average player wouldn't care is what I'm saying. I also kind of forgot to add it. So I'm going to put it here. Holy shit, I look insane. Oh my god. Um, but if you disagree with anything I've said, come yell at me in the comments. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't actually yell at me. Be respectful, but I, I love to hear what other people have to say. So if you think I'm wrong, come and say it. I, I love hearing it. Uh, if you think I'm right, also say it because I love to hear that I'm right. As I said earlier. So, uh, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, and that have a good day, man. Be safe. Later.